G'day, this is Caden McDonald, and this is Goes All Right. G'day, guys, and welcome to the Goes All Right Grand Final Special. We have a massive show for yourselves to tune into. Um, you can tune in by watching. You can tune in by listening. We've got the the vodcast on Spotify. That's one of the perks of working with the best in the business. Um, I'm joined by my co-host Connor Rogers. Roger, how are you, mate? Never better. It's grand final week, my favourite time of the year. But I would almost argue, C McDonald, that this is not a grand final special. I think this is a grand final spectacular. It is, isn't it? With the line It's a bonanza. We have, we've got Jackie Post radio phenomenon coming in to, to belt some tunes. Yeah, we've got the Bromley Lynch twins. They're doing great stuff with their producey podcast. The quiz masters. We've got the list cloggers, Dan and Dill. Plenty more on the show, and I just couldn't be any more excited to get stuck in. Super exciting. Uh, we're going to talk some footy as well. The Cats and the Swans, the biggest day on the football calendar. Um, how are you feeling about it? Is there any nerves as a neutral supporter? No, not really nerves. I just get so excited. Excitement is the only emotion I feel during um, grand final week. It is the biggest day on the footballing calendar, but what is a very close second would be AFL's Night of Nights being the Brownlow medal. We were lucky enough to be there last night. The glitz and the glamour. And that felt like winning a premiership. To that, me, it was unbelievable. We were sent down by ball magnets and we were on the red carpet. We were chatting to all the superstars of the competition. And I thought we handled ourselves quite well there, Roger. We absolutely did handle ourselves well for the most part. Uh, except for you had a little blunder. Before we celebrated Patrick Creeps being the deserving mm. Brownlow medalist. Congratulations to you, Creeper. Well Creeper. We're out there oh, on no. the red carpet. Oh, no. We've absolutely put on a clinic with 10 or 12 interviews. Got plenty of insight, but then... The King of Kings walks in the top of the tree. Yeah. We're talking Gil McLaughlin. Yep. And uh, I don't think you had your finest moment, Kate. So it was a little bit frustrating because I thought we had done really well. We'd had a big day, a lot of content we filmed on the <laughs> Sunday. Uh, we had a lot of interviews come through and it's quite hectic. You know, there's photographers, there's big wigs, there's AFL stars just streaming through. You're sort of trying to get them over to have a chat. We had six, seven, eight, nine good chats with people uh, and I'd sort of decompressed. I was on a bit of an, an adrenaline dump because it was later in the red carpet. All of a sudden, Gillen walks past and we thought, geez, we've got to chat to Gil. So you've wrangled Gil over. We've sort of got the equipment, got the mic. Uh, we've fired it all up. And um, his advisor, his advisor said, all right, boys, we've got one question. Got one question. Um, Cause yeah, we, we got to get in and out and I've had a bit of a mare, Rog. And this is the one question. The one question we get to the one person you'd want to ask a question to. And this is what you fight away with. All right. We're here with the great man, Gil McLaughlin. Mate, are you pumped for the night? I'm excited. Yeah. It's a long night. We're doing what I'm doing, but I'm, uh, Oh yeah. Oh, Rog. Are you pumped? <laughs> like, oh, you? And Rog. the look, the look he gave to you was if to say, oh, you're better than that. Do I, do I have to answer this? All right. But then he gave us plenty. The great man. So yeah, for the context, it was, it was late in the piece. There was a little <laughs> bit of fatigue, the adrenaline dump. And I just butchered my words and then just went to the, the man who runs the AFL. <sighs> You're yeah, pumped. You're yeah, pumped. Um, <laughs> and he wasn't pumped. <laughs> I don't like, I don't think he was too pumped after that question at all. But I was pumped with what has been just an incredible first season of Goes All Right. Plenty of highlights. I know one of my favourites was getting Jackie Ginnivan on the show. How good was he to have on the podcast? Well, that felt like when we finally got some momentum in the podcast. It's always hard sort of starting a new podcast um, or, or starting a show in, in particular. So it was good to... To, to finally get some momentum with the show, to land Jackie Ginnivan. Um, he was amazing, the insight that he gave. So that would probably be one of our favourite episodes. If anyone hasn't checked that one out, um, yeah, go back it and give it a listen. It's what a about great a bit insight of a, to, the, to the man. A bit of a left field one that a lot of people seem to have absolutely loved. Uh, Mitch Cleary. Mitch Cleary, that's one of our most recent ones. The insight that he gave, gave in terms of getting into the AFL media was unbelievable. Not someone you would think of all the footballing landscape people want to listen to but that was absolutely fantastic and how about the comedy impressions of Elliot Loney that was one of the, the biggest belly laughs I've had all season I reckon yeah another one of our favorite episodes uh, we don't like to distinguish the episodes because anyone who comes on um, we really appreciate their time but Elliot Loney he is just a superstar in the making if not already a superstar and the way that he can just make us laugh is absurd so that's another one of our chats that we rank up there from the season it's been so much fun but this next week Grand final week. 
Yep. It is the biggest week of them all, and of course, when it comes to grand final week, you're talking predictions. And mm. uh, have you got have you got your winner yet? I do. I think we might reveal it a little bit later in the show. But another part of the podcast that I absolutely love is the engagement, Rog. The messages, the video messages that we get. It's a great part of the show. It's a great part of Spotify. We've gotten so many questions coming in about the show with our question of the week each week. And I believe uh, we've got some sent in to us this week, do we? Something's been sent in by another great podcast, The Full Credit Boys. Uh, they've sent in a little bit of a video here. We're not quite sure what it is. So let's check it out now. September. Wanker. Shut up. Some are just around the corner, footy finals and tipping comps are about to crown their champion. But how good is a pastime if it affects your moral code? Last year our mate, who goes by Beers FC, won our tipping comp. He actually won the entire thing, taking home $50,000. How did you do it? Absolutely no strategy. Some light-hearted banter promised some sort of end of season piss up, but by December, all of our mouths remained dry. He promised us box seats, promised us to stay at the pub, and then out of nowhere, Oof. he just disappeared. <laughs> You're right. Just football mates. With three rounds left in the 2022 AFL season, Beers FC was leading again. It's like he's rubbing it in our faces that he's won once, he's going to win again. It needed to be retribution. Andy, uh, honestly, Andy, cheers so no, much, mate. Um, we'll keep it all anonymous. I would need three perfect rounds to beat Beers FC. Impossible, right? Not if I know the results before they happen. I posted an ad on a Perth Facebook job page offering $150 for psychics willing to be on TV. The interest flooded in. If the psychics were real, Beers FC would meet his downfall. We set a date and lined up three psychics with interviews. Their skills and approach all varied. Okay. And produce a phenomenon where a face forms over the top of mine. My face just... <laughs> just Sorry, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I've been doing psychic work and healing work for about... Well, over 25 years. Now. See their face form, so you'll see the face change from male to female to having a moustache to old, young. Okay. So when did you start realising you had psychic abilities? Oh, I'm not actually a psychic. Okay. Um, well, because the ad, the ad said uh, we, we need psychics. Yeah, so I'd give it a crack. Okay. Um, all right, well, we might as well give it a go. When it was time to tip, they obliged. Does the name Beers FC, does that come in at all? It's um, Clive Waterhouse is the image. It's for a tipping comp. Not that I'm seeing, no. Oh, it feels close again, so, but I'm, I'm sensing a little more energy with this one here. Okay. So any, any psychics in the family, mate, or? Uh, only my great aunt, Roberta. Who'd she go for? She went for St Kilda. Notice you didn't tip St Kilda just then, though. No, she was a terrible psychic. But something psychic Sharon said rocked me to my core. I'm just getting a feeling about your dad. So mm. There's like a distant sort of feeling there. Um, sort of like, it could be an emotional distance as well. I'd always been close with my dad, but recently we had grown apart. How could the psychics be so accurate with something like this, but then at the same time tip North Melbourne? Who do you support? And North Melbourne. It's a tough year. <laughs> You've, I notice you tick North over Sydney. I can try that again, that one. No, no, I like the instinctive one, just yeah. as long as it wasn't stuffing the ballot, maybe because of, you know, of a support for the ruse. Decided to confront my dad. Dad, can we talk? The, the psychic said that like we had a distance and I don't know. Do you think we have a di like we have we probably should talk about it and spiral. It's not gonna mean anything, but we're trying to get Beers FC and bring him down. But one thing she said is that we have a distance that yeah, maybe I, is unresolved. I don't have any distance, but you're fine. We're fine. Don't don't worry about it. It's Josh. I think we we probably need to can you just stop with the bananas? I love you, The psychics were wrong about Dad. They're also really shit at tipping, just like me. Beers FC won again. He also made some promises he probably won't keep. But I was still grateful. Just needed to thank one person before it was too late. For everything you've done and for everything we've been through. <laughs> Josh, say no more. Let's just get out of here. As always, good work, Mark. <laughs> oh.
Thank you to Josh Garlop for sending that in. Rog, I'm not quite sure about the psychic predicting the grand final, so we're going to bring an expert in. We're joined by Michael Barlow. Michael, how are you, mate? Oh, boy, it's good to be here. It's a bit happening, but it's really good to be here. Joshy Garlop, a really good operator, but you too. Just a level, of the a level above. Jeez. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure about the psychic, but I've heard some of your expert opinions, oh, and really? it almost is psychic <laughs> the way it tends to come true. So we thought no better man to sit in the mm. chair and give us a, a bit of a preview of Cat Swans. What do you think about the Cats' chances of, of winning, mate? Do you have them as a favourite like oh, so many do? I do. Well, they've been the best team all year, haven't they? The yeah. Cats. Mm. So, and it comes down to the one day, and the one day of which they haven't been able to get to consistently, lots of prelims in the past decade. They won one in 2011, uh, but they've been the most consistent or one of the most consistent clubs for a long time, and I think their time is now. Uh, they've mm. got that mix of maturity and a fair bit of youth as well that's coming through and provides a bit of X factor. So I think it is the Cats um, to win, but like all all good experts, you sit mm. on the fence, and I can see why Sydney could win as well. Where have you seen Geelong's improvement from this year? Obviously, they made a prelim, and it was sort of like, where can they go from here? And mm. now they've they were two games clear on top of the ladder um, uh, into the grand final in emphatic fashion. So where have you seen the improvement from? It was them? obvious for everyone to see right from their first preseason game this year, I was actually there, um, GMHBA Stadium. Mm. They played Richmond mm. and they brought in an overlap handball game. Yeah. So for, for years they've been a kick, control, build the ball up slowly. And they've just brought in this little handball game between the arcs, which brings their speed and skill in. <sighs> then they get the ball in a bit quicker. Yep does help that you've got a, a fully fit Jeremy Cameron up and going. Mm-hmm. And Tom Hawkins has elevated his game to another level with the ball coming in quicker. So that's as subtle as it's been in terms of game style. But then personnel-wise, Tyson Stengel, the last half of the year of Max Holmes, who who may or may not play, uh, as I said, they tend to find young talent um, mm-hmm. that pop in and give this older group a bit of X factor that – that should take them to premiership glory. Well, as you said, Geelong are sort of, they've been the best team all year. They have the premiership expectation on them. Do you think that's a heavy burden to carry and potentially maybe Swans being the underdogs that could, that mm. alleviation of pressure could be what wins them the flag? Yeah. So I'll start with the Cats. I reckon Chris Scott does it really well. Yeah. He, I heard him speak during the week. He said something really interesting because everyone piles on. Everyone, I think there's mm. a bit of pile on on the Cats and there's a pile on in terms of they played one game in 27 days. Mm. And Chris Scott came out and said, well, that's fine if people think that, but our, our group internally is discussing exactly why it's a positive, that we can train yep. to the minute, we can either, either train the guys that need to train more or we can pull the guys out that don't need the work. So they would be um, imploring their guys that they're in a really good position. The other side of the coin is is the Swans, who yeah, they, they, whether John Longmire is going to give them a it's the free swing. Well, there's mm, never a free mm. swing at a ground because so much is on the line, but we're underdogs. Let's go in, a bit of an ambush and, and swing the club. Ross Lyon used to say, swing the club. Yep. So just, you know, <laughs> let it loose today. Let it yep. loose. So I think the Swans will absolutely do that and, and probably rely a little bit on the fact that maybe the, the Cats will tighten up. There's stars all over the field um, for the grand final. What can we expect, do you think, from a Lance Buddy Franklin? A little bit quiet in the qualifier, a mm. little bit of form um, in the prelim. Grand final, he could just explode. What are you expecting? There's going to be a bit. Of, there's going to be a bit of expectation on him mm. if Sam Reid is either out or underdone. Like Logan McDonald has huge upside. He'll be a very good player mm. for a long time, um, but a bit out of form. So the reliance on Buddy without Reid and with Logan McDonald, a young player, and obviously another key coming in, whether it's McLean or um, a Marty. Um, Peter Adams has done himself a mischief. He can't can't play after getting three weeks in the VFL. So, yeah, Buddy, there's going to be a bit of pressure on Buddy. Um, it, it, but why not? He's not. What is it? Nine years? Ten yeah, years? He's been there, and exactly this, right. this might be the swan song. Pardon the pun. He's had a couple of moments where there's pressure, mm. and he always delivers. So this just could be the perfect recipe for the big Bud. Mm. I think Buddy will be obviously a key part if the Swannies do happen to win the big dance. But what else have you got for us? Why else could they yeah. win, this, win this grand final? Yeah, I think Buddy plays a role. I, I think. The Swans is a bit like death by a million paper cuts. They've, they've got their, just a spattering of, of class all around. Chad Warner's one that's gone bang this year. Yep. Um, but if he's down, you know, it's Luke Parker, it's Rowbottom that get to work. Callum Mills has probably been their most consistent performer all year. Um, Goulden was quiet on the weekend, but he wouldn't put two bad ones together, so he'll, mm. he'll spike. Uh, McInerney, first half of the year, was, in my opinion, an All-Australian you know, 40 squad. Uh, he, he's died off a bit the back half, but they're not reliant on too few. They, they can they can afford four or five of their guys to have really quiet games. 
knowing the rest pick up the slap, uh, slack. And they've got some guys primed, that kind of centre forward position that can come onto the scene in the grand final and, and, and split the game apart. I speak of like Goulden and, and Papley and, and Hayward. So I think those, those three in particular um, are the three that can get to work for the Swans if, if they're to get the result. Well, we've got another two that could potentially mm. really play a role in the grand final. So a segment that we've done all year on Goes All Right is our boy of the week where we highlight someone who is sort of playing a role but is doing something that we really love, Roger. It could just be absolutely anything, the smallest thing. Our boy of the season, of course, went to Trent Bianco. Just a smooth, smooth. mover, no limitations. He's got, he's got one gear. It's got gear two, I reckon. He, yeah. he never goes fast and he's never going full-blown. But he slow. always does something with the pill, which we absolutely love. But we've got two air boys, one air boy each, uh, one from either team playing in the mm. big dance this weekend. You've already mentioned one of them and it's, it's a boy I, I really do love because he's come from my junior footy club, mm. the Mighty Banyal Bears, and that is... Justin McInerney, yes. J-Mac. I think his outside run, uh, he wasn't expected to be this have this much of an impact this early in his career. He's come in, and I think that his run on the outside could could have a big part to play in this grand final. They paint the fences, don't they, the wingmen? Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> it's a it's a thankless task. You don't get much ball, but um, and that's probably happened to him the last half of the year, but plays a role. He gets back, <laughs> sports defence, gets forward mm. and, and kicked a nice goal on the weekend. So I like that one. If you give me one from Sydney... Uh, I will go with James Rowbottom. Right, yeah, he's, yeah, I think he's, he's a he's just a he's the one that you know pr- could probably walk down Swan Street and and be fairly unnoticeable. But mm. I reckon Horse Longmire puts his magnet in pretty quickly every week. Yep. Yeah, well, there's a, a, a bloke from the Cats who um, we actually named as our Boy of the Week, and we want to highlight him again. Um, he's sort of on the lips of everyone when they talk about these role players at Geelong, and it's Brad Close. Talk to us about Brad Close this season. He wears the long sleeves. I think, yeah. I think he wears the long sleeves because he's got arms like noodles. But that's all right. <laughs> I think he'd embrace that. Now, I love his story. He's a, he's a mature age recruit, and that's to, to my point about Geelong. They just find these guys – that come in and fit into their system. Tyson Stengel, who's high in talent, but has now found the maturity to be an AFL player. Um, similar to close from Geelong. Uh, I love, I love a whether it's a redemption story, but he's only a young player, but he's probably been much maligned in his young career. And his brother's probably the most important player, I reckon, on the Cats side, mm. Cam Guthrie. Yep. I like Zach Guthrie's story. Yeah. Great year. He, I think, I know a lot of Cats fans, and they were he was a whipping boy. He was a whipping boy for a long, a long time. time. Yeah. And now he's just signed a two-year contract extension and um, he's a tough young kid that doesn't look like he should be tough. That's what yeah. I like mm. about him. Well, can you give us a, a definitive tip of, mm. of where you see this game going and unfolding? Yeah, I'll sit on the fence all day. But yep. now that I'm asked to give a tip, I'll go just with the form of the year. I will go Cats by 15. Um, Norm Smith medal, Cam Guthrie, because yeah, I think he gets undervalued all year and, and he won't. Seek out the um, seek out the the highs of a Norm Smith, but I think he's the most important player on the ground on Saturday, and he'll get it. Can I give you a left field one that you can do to all your take to all your other media commitments, and uh, you can it, report this? Piling up. <laughs> I I think that with Sam Reid likely being out, mm. I want to see them throw Paddy McCartan forward. Wow! And, wow. Wow. and watch the number one draft pick full forward dominate on Grand Final day. It'd be one of the all time. One stories. problem with that: the, the logic of the head coach in me. Yeah, Geelong's forwards. Mm. Who are you going to put on Cameron and Hawkins? Uh, right bottom or McInerney, I reckon. One of our boys will get the job done. Remarkable. If, if, if they could do that. <laughs> If Robottom goes down and plays on Jeremy Cameron, yep. he's he's unbelievable. Beautiful. Yeah. Mick, it's been awesome for you to join us um, on Goes All Right. It's absolutely footy fever here in Melbourne at the minute. Uh, we've sent the Bromley Lynch lads who do a podcast here at Producey out on the streets, and they've been asking the public why players are bigger than the game. So here are the boys out on the streets. Josh, it's Melbourne. It's September. It's a footy bubble. We're in the bubble, Sam. We are in the bubble. There's a lot of pressure on our footy players. Sam, let's go change some perspectives on these footy players. Josh, because they are human too. They are Let's go all. find out what's in the hearts and minds of these footy players. Josh, we're here with Josh. Yeah. How good a name is Josh? A ripper. Absolute yes. ripper, I tell you. Uh, we're here with Matt, who is about to humanise these AFL players. Now, Josh, if you could go for a coffee walk with any yeah. AFL player, who would it be? Probably Tom Stewart. Matt, who would you most want to go for a coffee walk with? Oh, look, probably Dill Buckley. Sounds like a really good bloke, you At- know. Oh, reminds me saying, if you could go to Mars with one footy player, who would it be? You remember, you're stuck on a ship yeah. for two weeks. All you've got is them. 
you know what, once again, Tom Stewart. <laughs> this guy loves Tom Stewart. Klinger, who would you most want to have a coffee walk with in the AFL? I was thinking like an Ed Langdon, because he's a bit, you know, he's, a, he's good weed. We love a bit of good weed. I'm a myself, so we can have a nice chat. Sam, it's very interesting to see the dynamic here. So we've got, we've got a few that have obviously just had a couple of drinks yeah. on a Friday night. We've got a couple that are celebrating for the weekend. We have. But we've just got all, you know, perspectives of human behaviour going on. It's good to see people are really thinking about it, to humanise the AFL player. And we love it. We love it, OK? Not as much as we love you. Which player would make a great Prime Minister? Phil Davis. He would. Is it the glasses? I think he's just... He, he knows what he's talking about. He knows the changes that need to be made. And, and it's time for a Prime Minister like male Prime Minister, to have a ponytail. Yeah. Which player would be the best Prime Minister? Ooh, probably Jezza Cameron. I reckon he's got a bit of ticker about him. There'd be, a, there'd be a lot of fishing and hunting. There, would be. Back into the, there uh, would be, but I'm all for it. I mean, a few public holidays here or there. Uh, who would you rather read your bedtime story out of Kevin Sheedy and Andrew Demetriou? I bet if you want to, Kevin Sheedy. <laughs> he loves it red. <laughs> <laughs> he does, doesn't he? <laughs> so, a couple of questions. Now, if any AFL player was a Prime Minister, which one would you want? Dustin Martin. Who? Dustin Martin. Dustin Martin, we've got to go, we've got to go. Now, who would you, who would you take to a yoga retreat out of Jack Ginnivan and um, Toby Green? Uh, Toby Green. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Thank, you for joining, thank you for joining us. <laughs> got him, got him. Right on, John. Thank you. I forgot my Mikey. I'm just, what's your name? Harry, is this really fun? What's so good about it? I don't have to do it. Very good. Thank you very much, Harry. Appreciate it. Well, there you go, Melbourne. The players are humanised. You hear that? What's that? We just burst the bubble. Humanise our players. From out on the streets to now in studio live with us, how was it out there, boys? So probably Lynch lads. It was, uh, it was great, Connor. We got to find a bit of uh, the sensitive side of our AFL players. What the fans we, thought of their sensitive, which sides. is what we want to know, because we all answer those like rudimentary questions about players, but then like we wanted to delve a little bit deeper, and I think we got the answers we were looking for. You blokes absolutely smashed it. So we're obviously joined by Josh and Sam from the Bromley Lynch podcast. Um, they do the potty out of producers. So we're, we're colleagues. We, we are. are colleagues. It's just a, a, a podcast about when you've been on. I have uh, been Kados. on. It's just a battery charging. It's out on a Monday morning. You know, people get a bit flat on a Monday morning. So we're trying to rewrite the script in that way. And we're battery charging. We do a quiz with people. We have some great, great people join us. So it's just a bit of fun. The quiz is a very famous segment. Do you have a grand final edition one for us today? Well, it's funny you <laughs> ask. <laughs> because... <laughs> Perhaps we do have a little grand final oh quiz. My oh, my a God. Quiz. <laughs> <laughs> there was a quiz here. And just do us a favour, right? Off the, off the top of the show, you, yeah. you said the word rudimentary, yeah. and it's been in my head ever since because we, we need to keep it simple for our man over here. Yeah, if we could make sure no, none of those large words in the, in the quiz. Okay, I'll take rudimentary out of the quiz. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank you. That's greatly appreciated. Would you like me to start the quiz? We'd love a oh. quiz. All right. We have We've got a five quiz on goes all right. This is You'll rip this is sort of metaverse sort yeah. of uh, Marvel style. Yeah, it's beautiful. Brilliant. We're looking forward to it. Okay. Are we going to go contest between you two? So uh, yeah. maybe a quick we, buzz we, in. We okay. Can okay. So you say Kados, Connor. Okay. You got the Who won the Norm Smith medal in the 2010 drawn grand Kados. final? It was Lenny Hayes. Well done. Yeah, of one, course. One nil. Had a real sort of Darren Lockyer grasped to his voice in the speech as well. Yes. Uh, Lenny Hayes. It was very And he was filthy. He, he just was. sort of oh, got yeah. it and walked off. I just feel he like was. there was a buzz and then there was an um and there was a name. I think he bought himself time with the um. So let's just let's just keep, uh, <laughs> right. keep our tabs uh, on that. We'll just get the instant replay up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. Who has the most amount of touches in a grand final? Uh, Connor. Greg Williams. No. No. Kados. Yes. Simon Black. No. And... Christian Petrarca. I've looked into it. And oh, it, you've oh, done some I thought padding. it was the same, but it's just Petrarca. So that's wrong. They've credited him with the 40%. They positions. gave him the extra one because he, yeah. that's. He wow. says Simon Black though, so it's wrong. No. Last no year, points. Petrarca, 40 touches. Mm, bad luck, wow. McDonald. Unbelievable. No there. Unbelievable. <laughs> We're taking this one back a bit. Who has won the most premierships of any player? 
Oh. Kados. Yeah. Michael Tuck. Oh, mate, Kados well is done. taking the piss out of you. Well oh, oh, there's levels to this game. The there's, that's, <laughs> why, that's why he's on the front cover in the, in the <laughs> magazine. That's, 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 that's why he runs the show. Question four, two to go. Can you whisper it to Connor and maybe? Yeah, yeah, like, I'll, help you. I'll, give you, I'll give you some how, sign language under the table. Right? <laughs> how many goals did Darren Jarman kick? Connor. In a, Five. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Well done. This is a bit of a Conway I would never have yeah. known yeah. that. Oh, I would never. Yeah, gets Rogers on the board. We well, love this. <laughs> Known as the best kick uh, out of South Australia as well, Darren Jarman. So I knew that. You should have asked that as the next question. We've got that right too. <laughs> well, Sam, you stole the question. So there's one to no, go. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. What AFL grand final year and player do you relate this commentary to? Connor. Cometh the moment, cometh the champion. Player and the year. I suppose I have to go because I buzzed Great in. question, Josh. Ripper. Cometh this, the moment. This is what you get on the Bromley Lynch. <laughs> it's fine. I was just certain you were going to go with Leo Barry, you star, but cometh yeah, the moment, yeah. cometh the champion. I'm going to have to go with uh, 2018. Wrong. <laughs> Kados, I'm going to say Brendan Goddard. Kicking a goal against Collingwood for the Saints. Oh, oh You're it's both wrong. The, one of the greatest players of all time did this. Oh, Judd. No, Cooter. No. Adam <laughs> Goods, 2012, oh. when he kicked pretty much the winning goal. That is for elite. Sydney. Come at the elite. moment, come at the champion, Bruce McAvaney. Well, we'll Jeez. just hand in our formal resignation uh, for our positions in this chair. Uh, you're probably a bit young for the 2012 <laughs> grand final, anyway. 24. I am young. So it's obviously grand final week. What yep. do you boys enjoy about the AFL grand final week? Well, I love on the Saturday morning just the confessed, the birds they're, they're confessed <laughs> You know, professional punters that think they know exactly what's going to happen yeah. on Grand Final Day, where no one has any idea what's going to unfold. Mm. I love the people just guessing, Norm Smith, yeah. all that sort of stuff, just the chatter around it. I love that. I was at the most infamous Grand Final ever played really? before the game, Meatloaf. I oh. was at the game. So I was at the Meatloaf, and I was sitting in like level two. Great seats. Did you acknowledge it? <laughs> no, no, this was it. So I was with someone. You loved it. And I'm like, I saw this Harley come in. I'm like, oh, yeah, Meatloaf's here. And then it was like no one was playing. So like for 20 minutes, I'm like, has he started yet? Has he started? Because you're like, what the f- what the hell is going on? Good save. <laughs> yeah, so what the hell is going on here? Because it was probably Rest in peace, by the way. Yeah, one mm. thing, like you mm. couldn't even notice that he was there. Because mm. you're like, it's this PA system broken, but it wasn't broken. His career was broken. <laughs> yeah. You know you know what I love? Yeah. The fact that we have a public holiday for it. Yeah. Like for me. Too. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, no, not for me. Like <laughs> what we should do as well. But is there any other sport like does he did the Super Bowl, do they have a public holiday over What's in America a Sunday? For? So and I guess he has a Saturday. Maybe they have like a, a Monday long weekend. Maybe they do, but I know we definitely have. I don't reckon here. the NRL do. I reckon no, they bit, do. They do. They now. do. Oh. They do on the Monday. Monday I the believe. Monday. You blokes just know everything. I these quizzes are. Monday. These oh. quizzes that's are doing phenomenal on the quiz. stuff. Retain, for you. That is why we run the quiz over on the Bromley Lynch podcast. So the the Bromley Lynch podcast, very fun podcast. They've got a lot of great segments. We've also got a great segment on goes all right, and we want to bring it out with you boys and um, yeah. Go through it with you. I think it's a slightly greater segment than the ones you guys do. Okay, we'll see about that. Um, we'll this, be the is, judges. this is world famous segment. It's called Goes All Right or Doesn't. We're going to bring up three different sort of AFL grand final uh-huh. traditions and yeah. things. Yeah. And we just want to know whether they go all right, right or whether they don't. Uh-huh, I like this. So this is world famous. This is. Uh, they're talking about it. I reckon the someone outside of Australia has seen a segment. Intergalactic, <laughs> I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, it's transcended universes. Mars style. Fire us off, McDonald. Um, goes all right or doesn't, AFL grand final curtain raises. Like what they used to have the under-18s, the VFL mm. back in the day. Goes all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah a, bring it back. I'm a goes all right. As like if you it. don't want to watch another game before the game. Wouldn't like, it be great? You'd love it if they could uh, tie it up so then it's like the AFL W grand final before oh, yeah, or something yeah. like that would be absolutely That's phenomenal. That's a while away, get to I that think, point. but... That would be even like an AFLW game would be good. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, well, the I'm VFL right. grand final. Yeah, game. Yeah, I'm, I'm a goes all right. They used to do a bit of NAB league. I think they might do. Maybe they do like under eighteen sort of showcase game. Maybe they do that yeah. on the Friday night. So it'd be Vic, yeah. Vic Metro versus Vic Country. That'll be good. Yeah. That's sensational. So but that's on the on move the Friday. Move that to the Saturday. 
Yeah, yeah, get in there. Get in there. Expose the, sh- expose the young uh, developing players. The more footy, exactly. the better. I I'm, haven't been lucky enough to see Carlton make a grand final, but if we ever did, I would get there the minute the doors open. I'd love to sit there and just Don't watch. hold your breath, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. I, know. I won't yeah, be. You've got the Brownlow medalist, Carlton <laughs> medalist, and uh, three all Australians. You still can't make the final. <laughs> um, I think we all agree that it goes all right. The next one we've got is clash jumpers. So the non-traditional jumper in the grand final. Richmond had to do it in 2017. There's a bit of conjecture around wearing a non-traditional kit in a grand final. Goes all right or doesn't? Uh, no, it goes all right. Smart move. Mm. Imagine watching a – it's a, yeah. the most watched televised game. Mm. You need the colours you need to, to not yeah. – Yeah, you need to differentiate. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you would hate for a game to be <laughs> decided upon someone giving it to the opposition Absolutely. player. Absolutely. Yeah. That yeah. would suck. Yeah. And oh. I, I hate tuning in and it's it, it cuts to the wide shot. And like both jumpers just blend yeah. in. Remember the Anzac Day a couple of years ago where both Couldn't Anzac see. Day Couldn't clashes tell. were just dark? Yeah. Can I follow on with it goes all right for that? Yeah. I love the <laughs> the home strip if they like the if they had to w- wear the clash strip changing into their home, home strip, strip yeah. when mm. receiving the, the awards. Strip. That's great. Yeah. That's, That's fantastic. That goes all right. I don't like the look of a clash jumper in a grand final. I'm a big fan of tradition. So I reckon if two teams that clash make the grand final, the team that uh, won the grand final uh, prelim by the least amount of points, does not qualify, and a team that doesn't clash gets <laughs> upgraded into the big dance. The, that would be my system. The property stewards would have a meltdown. <laughs> I hate that. And the last goes all right or doesn't, lads, is the halftime entertainment this year. Robbie Williams goes all right or doesn't. I've seen Robbie live. Angels. And you guess and me what? Both. He goes all right. He's yeah, the right. best. He goes all right. Robbie's he, not just great for, you know, the 40 to 60-year-old female. No, <laughs> he's, he's great for everyone. Let me enter- I get- dare say his first song will be Let Me Entertain. Best like, thing ever. Oh, if he, he comes runs- in on a chopper... Oh, yeah. He hangs down from a chopper. Right. Oh, oh my! Yeah. Can you believe that? If you look it up on YouTube, that he hangs down from a chopper and sings the song upside down. Yeah, that is unbelievable. I honestly, th- like, if you had to ask me, who is your ideal grand final entertainment? Top of the tree, number one draft pick, Sam. Oh, it is Robbie Williams. <laughs> He's great. I'm, I'm gonna say doesn't go all right. I what? reckon we can get someone a little bit more modern. Nah, I mean, we can get mate. someone who's in the charts right now. No. So who, who would you prefer? Olivia Do a leaper. Rodrigo. Do yeah. a leaper. Do a leaper. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Banger after banger. <laughs> you, you, ta- you come back to us on Monday and yeah. say if it goes all right or it doesn't. Yeah, not a bad yeah, call. Be the true. judge. The lid will be lifted off the MCG, not that it has a lid. <laughs> It'll be the single greatest performance in grand final history. Now, we've actually got 200 plus joining us next. Now, Josh, you're yes. very familiar with the work of oh, Nick Butler. Nick Butler. I'm in here every Wednesday and I love my Wednesdays for a number of reasons. One is because Nick Butler's here. He just brings <laughs> this. He's got a presence. Talk about he does have the a king. But some stuff. Stuff he does, he needs to be found accountable. So mm. what I decided to do was give him a taste of his own medicine. And I did a bit of a doorstop with him yeah, with good. some of the things that are factual and aren't quite factual uh, with Nick Butler. This is awesome. So this is Josh doorstopping the doorstopper, Nick Butler, out the front of Producey. Um, take a look at this. He's used to doorstopping people. Well, it's time to return the favour. Nick, Nick, whoa, Nick, Nick, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> a few allegations, mate. Yeah. Are you actually 200 centimetres? In uh, Rem Williams's, I am, yeah. When I and is it, true, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it true that Adrian Dodoro's got a cease and desist letter against you? <laughs> That's a bit strong, but he did say, <laughs> stop sending me mixtapes because you're clogging up my... And, and, and quickly, and quickly, Nick, was it, is it true that you there is no billboard of you in Adelaide? No, there's a billboard and someone drew a big <laughs> on it. And also... Uh, is it you that's been leaving this? Is it? Is it? Nick? Is, is, it, is, is it true? Is it true? Nick, is it true you've been leaving skin marks at the toilet? Speak to my manager. The doorstopper has been doorstopped. Unbelievable scenes. And now we're joined by the great man and host of the 200 plus podcast, Nick Butler. How are you, mate? Oh, big Kato, I'm, uh, I'm good. <laughs> good to be on. Goes all right. Big audience, big show. It's grand final week. The energy is electric. And for the grand final show, you need the biggest and the best of guests, which is why we've got our man Eva Marich in the studio. How are you, brother? Oh, big boy. Yeah, thanks. Here he is. thanks for having me. Appreciate the invite. And yeah. what's this little uh, little gift I've seen on the table here? Yeah, a bit of home um, produce there with the Croatian-style sausages and a jar of gherkins. Um, in the 2020 hub, my room was named the Gherkin Lounge and it was open to <laughs> all the players and staff. So I thought I'd bring it on and uh, share it with you guys. Big, aggressive, masculine gifts. That's a real big man. See, we pump up Sam Draper on 200 plus. Yes. It's normally myself. 
Drapes and Goz. It's an eclectic crew. Drapes is in Spain somewhere. He won goal of the year, the big boy yes. with the mullet. This man was the original big boy with the mullet, mm. the Davy Crockett. They were selling him in the cheer squad. We're in rare air here. Avan, Avan walked so Sammy Draper could run. That is exactly right. He should, he should be paying you royalties. <laughs> how's, it, how's it feel now that you, big, uh, Bailey, uh, Bailey Smith and these lads are running around with the mullet and everyone's raving about them? Do you think you deserve a bit more credit for your mullet? Look, I, I don't want to take all the credit for the mullet because <laughs> I got some inspiration myself as a young kid from uh, some 90s action heroes. So, oh, um, yeah. yeah. Like I wasn't the first. Thor? Who? who? He-Man. Uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, and fair enough. Jean Claude. Yeah. Yes. Just full on, full on cult figure status. Um, Nick, so you're the host of the 200 Plus uh, podcast, Going Beautifully. Yes. Um, how, how's it been stepping into the podcast game? I loved it. It's a beautifully weird uh, medium, different to the news, where everything, everything's stiff and timed mm. and ties and makeup. It's, it's be real. We talk about edging and raw dogging <laughs> oh. and underwear. Yes. And insecurities you about talk, being big. And you talk gherkin, about it all. Gherkin rooms. <laughs> Nothing is off. Mm. What word am I looking for? Nothing, Nothing is no, limits. Nothing's off limits. <laughs> off limits. Nothing's off limits in the big man world. Nothing is off limits, especially old balls and young balls. The world famous segment. Old balls, young balls. It's a generation gap that we do on the show. So I'm nearing 40. Uh, mm. Drapes is 23. Goz, 30. Um, Evie here, 36. So we like to like to shoot the shit As for want of a better word because things have changed in the last 20 years so we've it's been a big segment we almost got sued by the Frio so Footy Club <laughs> for um, old I think they have old buck yeah. young buck or right. something yeah they didn't like the name so we had to change it to old balls young balls but it's good have, so, you, have you got a grand final edition of old balls young balls for us that we can get involved in well I think the grand final is our edition yeah it's mm. just what you like about your grand final weekend and, and what did you love about it? The marathon. The, the marathon. footy marathon. marathon. You kids, you millennials, you might not remember, but the, the host broadcaster back in the day come about 8 o'clock on grand final eve. It was wall-to-wall -wall grannies. My and dad, you, didn't yeah. have a, you didn't have a rundown for this. You didn't know what you were going to get. Just and the shuffle. In the zone. Got yeah. In the zone, man. My dad would always talk about how um, the grand final eve, there was a, a grand final marathon. I'm not sure they still do it, Rog. No, I wasn't even aware this was ever a thing. Ivan, did you used to watch the grand final marathon? No, nah, not really. Um, I was more into <laughs> soccer as a kid, Come so, on. yeah. It's like drapes. Well, now, yeah. if we want to watch a grand final, we've got kayak. We just get <laughs> yeah, that up. We no. flick to any which game whenever we log. I don't want to wait around on a marathon Mate. and have no idea what's coming next. No, nah, you've got to have some resilience. On you demand. You get through the shit black and white grand final <laughs> so you get your 89 grand final. I'll you know, take you, it on demand and in colour, The history of the game. <laughs> so it was good. It was. Look, it was a bit of a punish at times. But yeah. the other thing is the players used to rotate through the hosting. So you'd be getting your mm. Paul Salmons and Mark Harvey and Dermy all doing an hour each. And that was good. That'd be some rough as guts footy hosts. That's elite. So for 24 hours. So it was good. It brings back great memories. I love it. I, I click into grand final mode at about four From the brand low almost. Nah, well, no, that's build up. Mm. I mean real excitement slash anxiety where yep. you start to vomit a little bit of your food. Yeah. Four o'clock Friday. Another great segment you guys have on the 200 and plus uh, podcast is the spirit animal. Yes. It's a great, it's going great guns, the spirit animal. <laughs> Do you have a grand final spirit animal? Do you really believe that? Talk us through what a spirit animal is to you. Spirit animal. See, big men are different to you little guys yeah. on the <laughs> periphery, you know, winning brown lows and kicking goals and bananas. Big men sort of have to, they're, they're responsible for the energy and effort mm. and courage mm. and aggression and resilience. And if you don't bring that, you're useless. Right. You get out. <laughs> so we pretty much reward a big man every week who shows that. They, they could get five touches, but it could be one action, could be coming on with a broken nose or whatever. It doesn't have mm. to be best on ground. So it's just big man qualities. And who's your who's your spirit animals in the big dance coming up? The cats and the swannies, if you don't mind. Well, weirdly, we've rewarded both these guys. So Reece Stanley, Reece Stanley got a nom nomination during the year because we felt he is so good looking he is. that we think it's it affects his stance as a player. Like we yeah. think if he's uglier, he'd be considered a better player. Right. Mm. Agreed. People yeah. think yeah. Reece Stanley <laughs> should be yeah. better, guys. Should be better. Yeah. Good runner, good looking, good kick, takes a few marks, kicks a few goals, but should be better because mm. he's so good looking. 
But so, I don't think we should be making excuses for the good-looking blokes. I reckon it's about time they get brought down a peg, you know what I mean? Maybe, <laughs> but he's weathered that. And yeah. he's going to get a game on, on Saturday. So well done to Reece Stanley. And Hick... Oh, Goz what a story. Hick because what a he's story. the opposite. Yeah. He looks like an unmade bed. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he dropped the ball and he'll miss his shoe. He's gawky, Wanky. he's wonky, but he took a big clutch mark on the weekend. So he is the resilience animal. So we've got the good looking rooster yep. and the unmade bed, and they're going to go at it, Ivy. And who's going to win the battle? Yeah, look, really hard to say. But look, I think both of them have showed a lot of resilience across their careers, travelled, um, you know, different clubs and that sort of thing. So I'm really excited about seeing that battle. I know, I know you are as well. So um, Give us a winner. Who wins that contest, do you think, yeah. on the day? And why? Yeah, 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 look, I'll, I'll probably go with the guy that really just roughs it up and, and scraps, and that's probably Hickey. Like um, you, the brute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I probably respect the go- those guys but um, a lot. But um, look, Reese um, Stanley's um, a quality player, so he'll put up a fair fight. If you were playing on Reese and you know that he can run like the wind, I think Nick Revolt said he's the best athlete he's ever seen. Mm. What do you do? I mean, you can't kick his ankles. How do you slow him down? Yeah, you don't want to get caught up in a running race no. or uh, athletics. Um, bump so, him, yeah, him. bump him, make him... Uh, move off his line those sorts of things so mm. yeah. there's a lot of moments that go down in um, grand final folklore now Ivan you've got a story from the 2017 grand final yeah. uh, we'd love to hear it if you could exclusive this this yeah. is yeah. untold yeah, actually, bit of a um, yarn I don't think I've told many people this story but <laughs> yeah in 2017 I retired sort of towards the end of the year and I really wanted to get into coaching and play well-being so um, Richmond sort of gave me an opportunity to do a bit of an apprenticeship um, so I sat in the coach's box um throughout the final series and but I got offered a um, sort of a cashy leading into the um, on grand final morning the yeah that's the season for the cashy yeah. and, and look I, I don't get, I didn't get many cashies in my um, time <laughs> um, that was probably my first or second one so but it was um, to do a bit of a pub crawl with Tony Modra brilliant um, yeah unreal. Godra um, you would have loved Godra growing up wouldn't you yeah loved watching him play um, and anyway so we bit of a pub crawl and I sort of had about <laughs> four or five pints okay. and then I had to sort of leave uh, the last pub I think it was um, the precinct actually and, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, just as you're the, warming up yeah, <laughs> yeah. run into the uh, into the change rooms and get ready for the game and look maybe it relaxed me a fair bit yeah and did we give you the, the match up board or Yep, and um, well, I'm here, still employed by Richmond, so it must have worked. No, well, yeah. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Dinner was that? having a beer or two on 360 the night before their first you final. you got to keep so it chilled. Maybe. you got to yes. keep it relaxed. Yeah. You might have been the turning point. Oh, who knows? Look, I haven't tried the um, five points before a game since then, but look, yeah. Did it you worked ever, on that ever have a beer before a game? Nah, never. I was very, very strict. Mm, yeah. Or so he says. But uh, <laughs> when we do start getting really excited for the grand finals, when we get the tunes pumping beforehand, not just the pre-match entertainment, but we're talking the great man, Mike Brady. Oh, You're a anthems. fan, aren't you? Bro? Huge fan. Mate, I got him to perform live on the show I did with Dill a few years ago. He, he likes 1,200 cash, Mikey Brady. <laughs> and he likes a special uh, app. Like, not a little cheap amp. It's got to be the right amp yeah, for the man. Right. But I love him. He gets a bit anxious. But he is football for me. I'm a, a one day in September man. I like my up there, Kazali. Yeah. But one day in September really gets the blood pumping. You know, me. he's actually written another song just to keep him relevant about local footy. So he's not just a September man. Now yeah. he's going all year long. I, heard, I didn't mind the local footy anthem. A couple of his little spin offs, not so much. But the, the local one I liked. I'm not sure it rivals. A local footy anthem on the YouTube scene as well, though, Roger, would it? Oh, the back pocket plugger back you're pocket referring plugger. to. Are you familiar with the back pocket plugger? You'll have to. We'll have to get you onto I'll, it. I'll be. I'll be googling oh. after this. Yeah, get it. Get on it on the Spotify. Well, we have. <laughs> uh, we are lucky enough to have uh, Mike Brady live in studio, but we Fair have think of twelve hundred. Who's paid for that? Mm. We have got the next best thing. Radio superstar, we're talking Gold FM host Jack Post has sent in his version of the Mike Brady classic. Oh yeah. Hey mate, you've got to hear this. There's this guy in the studio doing a cover of Up There Kazali. Up There Kazali? I'm too busy for that. In my 60 years of being an audio engineer, I have never heard anything as beautiful as this. Doesn't Mike Brady already sing Up There Kazali? Not like this. Jack from the top, mate. Just like last time. Up there Kazali In there and fire You're up there Renato Show them your might Up there, Kazali Don't let them in Fly like an angel You're out there People need to hear 
hear this. Put it on air. You're out there to win. Out there Hey Gil, you know that grand final sound you've been looking for? Listen to this! Cool, I think we got it mate, thank you. <laughs> Beautiful stuff from our musical guest, Jack Post, a very artsy rendition of Up There, Kazali. And now we're joined by the podcasting juggernaut itself, the List Clogger Boys, Dan and Deal. How are you, lads? Welcome to yeah. us. Yeah. 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 Great to be here. Great to be here. Yeah. Be on the outside listening yeah. in. Sounds like it's going well. Hopefully everyone's still with us. Yeah, like, they're awake yeah. or not. But you guys are the headliners. Everyone's stuck around yes, for the headliners. Yeah, 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 bring yeah, it fantastic. back. When did you find um, time to go to the op shop? Did you go to Sabres <laughs> earlier, did you? I thought no. you were in the office all day. Uh, they ran out of Vinnie Cotogio, so <laughs> the, the rundown. So I just went, yeah, this style I've instead. Got, I've got I thought it was dress up thing. I've got me fifth chest hair growing. I've got, I've counted them. I was had four for the whole year. I've got me fifth, so I thought I'd better try it. Put them on full display. Yeah. Boys, grand final week, yeah. um, big week for everyone involved in football. Um, what's the week sort of look like for you, boys? Oh, uh, mayhem. <laughs> yeah, mate. Can I say, People. I genuinely love, like, love the grand love final. Grand final. Like, I, I seriously <laughs> reckon it is just the best. And I'm so happy to be in Melbourne for it. So excited. I'm going to try and go to the game. Mm. Um, but I just think there's no better time in Australia than grand final time. Mm. Everyone's so happy. Everyone's up so, and so excited. I don't yeah. know. The vibe's electric. And I feel like everyone, no matter if you have a dog in the fight, you pick a team and you mm. whip them home on grand final day. Uh, do you have a sort of a tip or a prediction of where you think this game might I've go? I've been on Sydney hard from the start of finals. I've been right. I'm yeah. saying, look, Sydney, yeah. if they get it all together, they'll win, mm. and they're getting it together. Yeah. So Sydney by eight points. And what wow. do you mean, wow. guys? You get, get, I want to get into it. Just because I think, boys, together, just because really <laughs> probably you guys look at footy on, like a, surface, a, on a surface level. Surface level. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But Dylan and I, we kind of dig a bit we're deeper in into that. Because mm. yeah. mm. I think a little bit, because we've played AFL football as well. Yeah. So when we're watching, it we could put be ourselves, yeah, yeah, we put ourselves in their position. Um and just having that connection to the game, playing, um, <laughs> being professional footballer in our life, yeah. seven years, eight years, yeah. um, getting paid to do it, yeah. probably, you know, we know a bit more than everyone else. Yeah. So City by eight points because of all yeah. those things. And that's why yeah. we've come to the experts yeah. here. Can I say who I think's going to win? No. 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 Okay. Yeah, because I, have, I, have an, I actually have an, an interesting point, which I think – Got a bit comes, of a curveball well, for it's us. Well, not, it's not a curveball, but I just think I have an interesting maybe view that's a little bit different to that. No. I think Geelong are going to win. And it's not because of how they're going at the moment or what's happened the last few weeks. The reason I think Geelong are going to win is I looked at, as we are the list cloggers, okay? Mm, and you yeah. guys, I don't want to put words in your own mouth, but you pretty shit at footy sort of thing. Uh, Three-time coaches award. At the exactly. Manual Bears. So Thank you're, you pretty, you're, you're on the same page as us. And what I was looking at the other day was I, I think Geelong were playing against Brisbane. You look in the stands, they've got, you know, Sean Higgins, Asav Radigalia, mm. Sam Menangola. The 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 all these guys that you're like, Far, how are they not playing? Like, that's impressive. Like, you know, you wouldn't even make an emergency list if you were no. us. Like, cloggers, you know, normally you see a couple going, how are they there? Mm. But then you look at Sydney and it looks like what Reed's going to come out this week. Yeah. Maybe. Have you heard the red hot mail? Oh, I'll just quickly finish yeah. the point um, <laughs> that I'm going to make with that before you take it. One of the longest before points you, in the battle. I thought 360. I thought you were fake. 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 I thought you were Just to wrap it up really quickly. I just don't think they have the depth. But okay, that's no, all I'm still okay, so that, that's that's all that's I wanted to say. No worries. Yeah. Mm. So we were at the event last night, the List mm. Clogger. And that's all I have to say. The, yeah. list, the list Clogger event. Uh, do you boys enjoy the, the live stuff that you do? I don't want to say anything too much longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It is good. It's different. It's different in the potty. Um, crowd interaction. you got to keep the crowd on edge and engaged. So... It's our third one for the year, mm. and it was great. So best one for the year. To and you, it off. you announced list clogger of the year. Can you reveal that here as well on Goes All Right? Yeah, it's Goes All Right exclusive because mm. we haven't even said this on uh, on list clogger oh, yet. No. But oh, the list clogger of the year twenty twenty two is actually playing the grand final this week. Tom Atkins. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tommy Atkins yeah. playing a major role. He's got, the, he's got the sideburns. He's got the sideburns. Oh. Love his hair, dude. Love everything about him. And also, 
pipey. Yeah. Like very pipey. Yeah, yeah. Very Came strong. from playing Popeye. local footy, mm. VFL, into yes. AFL, and now one of the key cogs in the Geelong yes. chain. Mm, rowdy, rowdy, pipe up. But mm. what, one of the... <laughs> <laughs> you, you I did, don't know what that means. You did. <laughs> I think that's a wrestling. Uh, I, I, no, you did do list clog of the year, but also on, on your show, supposedly, on the B show here at Producey, <laughs> yeah. you also yeah. do uh, People Who. Can you talk us through through uh, the People Who and what you do? Yes, yeah, so the People Who is one of our amazing segments um, behind. There's one called GMZ, which is the top, and then the rest <laughs> then fall priority, after that. No, 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 at the bottom. Uh, uh, but People Who shows. is a segment where people who do things, say things, and we've, we've created a segment where people who X, and it's something that, Frustrates us. Frustrates, or sometimes we really like. Mm. Yeah. For example, you have one for this weekend. I have one. My so mine for this weekend would be people who keep asking you for tickets to the grand final, oh, yeah. assuming they mm. want them for free. Like, yeah. mm. who do you think I am? Yes, I played for seven years. <laughs> okay, yeah, twenty six games. Probably could get you tickets if I really tried. <laughs> no finals at no all. No finals appearances. But people who keep asking you for tickets, like. Mate, what do you want me to do? If I, I had them, I'd be using them. I've got zero pull at the Melbourne Football Club, but last year during lockdown, I was getting hit up from people in WA going, hey, mate, can you ring the club and get me a ticket? And I said, I absolutely can't. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's actually unbelievable the, the nerve on some people in the public that think that they can just get tickets by just asking and yeah. not even wanting to pay for it. Just yeah. like, you're just like... <laughs> I wish I had that confidence. That's unbelievable. It's yeah. really impressive. Can, it's I, can I give you one the people who I love? Because mm. I'm all about positivity. Yeah, I'm like yeah, yeah that's you know, You're so like more. bringing people down. No, I'm like bringing, bringing them up. up. Yep. So I, mm. I love people who, some people don't like this, but I love people who bandwagon grand final week, don't watch footy all year, and then they get to grand final and they've done their scarf and they think it's the best thing of all time. Deal. Yeah. So deal. Yeah, that's I pretty much hasn't watched pretty much all me. year. Yeah, it's like Christmas and like the Michael Bublé albums you hear, like people throw oh, it on only yeah. around yeah. December. I, I, like I like that. I, the only thing I'll say is, if you do it, you've got to go to the game and give it a bit of gusto. Yeah, because mm. you need. You, you, I, I just don't want it to take away from the experience of. Like, I want crowd. I mm. want the diehards there. That's why I love prelim week because it's almost nearly. Fans, fans, 50-50 of those mm. teams versus grand final. You do get the neutral crowd a bit more, a lot of corporates as well. Mm. Mine was almost the opposite to Rog. Oh, I had um, people who don't watch footy all season, but then on grand final post heaps about it on their stories. Yeah, like, really, yeah. literally, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like, actually yeah. exactly what I just said. <laughs> that actually, that's, that's again, literally, deal, 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 deal yeah. story yeah. up yeah. saying like, hey, <laughs> everyone, grand final at the MCG yeah. this yeah. weekend. Like, oh, we get it, mate. What we about, know it is. What about um, people who do the exact same people who was a person before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people I who had don't that listen. Yeah. I had that first yeah. in the meetings. <laughs> can I give you a left field prediction I have for this year's grand final? You can do what you want. Go for it. I think that we went have been lucky enough to see Mike Brady play during the year mm. and his voice, voice got a bit croaky. It like broke at certain points. He put on a clinic, broke yep. at certain points. Mm. I have a feeling that his voice is going to go this year and the whole crowd in unison is going to sing together and finish it off. Like, you know, if like you're at a club <laughs> and the DJ deck's cut out yeah, and everyone going, just starts going, like yeah. singing like, hey baby or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon yeah, everyone baby. together, wow. it'll be the most special moment Big in history. Yeah. Belts out up there because Ailey yeah. together and it'll Big be a story. Brady it's a good melt. song. It's a good song. Mm. Oh, that's a great song. Um, um, boys, do we have any tips? You, you boys are the experts. We want to, we want to know who's going to win, how much, yeah. and the Norm Smith. Would not say experts um, by any stretch, mm. but I reckon Geelong will win. I just think they've just been the too depth. consistent. I think they've won what fifteen games in a row. I think they'll win. Um, I think that's not true at all. I think they've won fifteen games in a row. I think they have. Oh, they yeah, fifteen no. in a row. They're, 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 good stuff, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure that's their true. last loss t- was to the Saints in round nine. Yeah, Jeez, there you go. So impressive. Fifteen in a row. Yeah. Um, You're going to change your They'll win by about. <laughs> yeah. I reckon they'll win by. I want to say close. I want to say five points because I want to be a good game. Mm. And Cam Guthrie to be best on Norm Smith. Mm. Love that. Got wow. a big head, Cam Guthrie. Massive yeah, he head. Have yeah. you seen he used it? to work at uh, Cold Rock, Rock Cafe. Yeah, really. Yeah, doing ice creams. That's why they started calling him Scoop. Scoop oh, Scoopsy. Don't mind that. What yeah, about nice. yourself, guys? You got Normie? Yeah. Um, so I said Sydney because I think they've won like 16 in a row or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Norm Smith will be um, Lloyd. Just from what I can see here on the Lloyd. AFL app. What Lloyd. is it that BT, of all the names he Lloyd. chose, Lloyd. like Lloyd is the most stock standard name to go for? Yeah. Well, you can sort of understand Orazio. And Massimo D'Ambrosio. Yeah. Like that, give Lloyd. that a bit of flavour. Yeah, but Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd. And then my first goal scorer, because there's always a, a market on this, uh, Reese Stanley. Yeah. Just pushes forward hard nice. early. Maybe a bit of a yeah. Sam Draper out of the ruck. Oh, yeah, I'd way, love to say that. One, Can I ask you guys a question? Because I reckon you'll have a good well, opinion on this. Well, you already did, but I was just, that. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> one more. The commentators for the game. 
What's mm. your ideal setup? Because I'm, oh, I've noticed this lately. Oh, like, I love to pick my alive. team at like no alive okay. um, at the moment mm, yep. that you'd mm. love to see. Yep. I for one am the biggest BT fan. Like, mm. I just want him ninety nine percent of the time just to be calling that game because mm. he. I just want it. I just want the energy like brought up for the grand final. Can you swap um, like telecasts? Like sort of. Yep. Uh, so yep. I, I would go James Brayshaw and Anthony Hudson, mm. and then I'd probably go Gary Lyon on the special comments. Ooh. That's prime time. Wow. So you know BT. No, I think BT's past his peak. Regular mm. listeners of Goes All Right would know every single week we nominate a Dwayne Russell quote of the week. Oh, Our yeah, favourite quote yeah. by Dwayne. Yeah. It would be Dwayne Russell, uh, James Brayshaw, and BT as my three. And special comments would probably be Kate yeah. and I on the on wow. the boundary, giving our expert opinion. Yeah, I love that. Definitely not Goz because no. he has been watching and doesn't <laughs> know that Geelong yeah. at one fifteen on the trial. Yeah. yeah, not true. That's interesting. Mm. That's Dwayne good. Russell's best quote, by the way, mm. of the year. I can't say I've I, heard I, much of Dwayne um, this year. We'll put together a little compilation and please send it to you. Just MP3. Oh, when you go, for, when you go for a bit of a walk, just yeah. chuck it in. Yeah. Yeah. Just sort of, no sort more of no more blasphemy on, on <laughs> no. our show, please. No. Sorry. Don't talk ill of the great man. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm not. I just saying I haven't heard much. <laughs> I can't believe you don't like Dwayne Russell. What do you hate about Dwayne? I don't like him. I do like Dwayne Russell. Sounds like you don't like him. No, the best quote of the year by Dwayne Russell was when someone did a really smooth pickup and he goes, he scooped that up like a responsible dog owner. I went, that is painting a better picture than Benji. Right, it's actually great. art, like you can visualize it. Yeah, it's um, have we done cool. a tip? Have we done a tip? Uh, I'm gonna. I think it's gonna be an absolute domination by the cats, and I reckon it'll be like 20 <laughs> goals. Like I reckon yeah. it'll be one of those ones. Wow, where go, wow, like so, 15 wow. goals. Nah, I'm going. Yeah. The, I'm going the opposite. I'm gonna go um, Swans. Yeah. Mm. By 22, Bud gets seven and gets the norm. Wow. I'm That's going. I'm That's going Zach to Norm That's Smith. Real. I like yeah. it. I love the Irishman. Um, mm. Boys. Thanks for joining us. That's a good call. Thank you. Yeah, I'm full yeah, of them. I, I actually need to watch the footy, so yeah, I, I, I know what I'm talking watch about. Yeah. Congrats to Zach Tui. Sorry, I know we're trying to finish, but yeah, yeah. I would love to stay for longer. Zach Tui is the most Thanks games for, for an Irishman guys. now. <laughs> is that true? Zach Tui's played the most games for an Irishman now? Yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah. I, I don't think that's right. No, he just took over Jim Steins' How's record. How's that, yeah. Zach? Yeah. And then I think if he wins the flag, it'll be he'll sort of equal Tyg. There you go. Wow. Sensational stuff. We, we love you, Zach. I might have made that up. Should still be, should still be out the baggy, uh, baggy Zach. <laughs> should. So um, should I. Lads, it's been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> lads, thanks so much for joining us. Thank um, you. We've got something really special now. So it's a bit of a battle of the pods. Mm. Um, we're going to go to a goal kicking challenge that we filmed a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, this one is one you don't want to miss no it's not I just before like people watch it and go there just want to know that the ball wasn't really as pumped to the ideal <laughs> no, no, no. The, the ideal inflation and there's different, KPI, me- there's different metrics when you're actually on the MCG with cre- like yeah. 70,000 there it's a lot different than not performing in front of because no I'm used to the footy being like brand new out of the box this yeah. one was a bit more kicked in a yeah. bit like a balloon so and I'm used to like BT commentating it and like <laughs> yeah. Being yeah. like Friday Night Lights. And it's yeah. really different because when you go out there, there's pressure from the camera. So if you've had more experience sort of doing goal kicking mm. challenge on YouTube, you can sort of Yeah, and YouTube's a great platform for like, you, yeah. can absorb you know, amateurs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will Because anyone can do that, seven. but not yeah. anyone yeah. can go onto the, the MCG. Well, you, know, you know our last match uh, on YouTube actually has like 100,000 views, which is a packed out MCG. And that's great. So that's, that's awesome. awesome. And like, I, had 30, awesome. I had 13 yeah. touches. Yeah. Performing day. in front of like 11-year-olds is like really cool. That's really good. Well, <laughs> well, let, let's see which podcast can uh, lay their claim to dominance in the producing studios. Will it be List Cloggers or Goes All Right? Here it is. We're down here to settle the great podcasting debate. Goes All Right versus List Cloggers. We're here to see who has the superior podcast. Now, normally it comes down to ratings. Normally it comes down to fans, but not today. We're deciding who is the premiership podcast by a set shot goal kicking. Two podcasts, four idiots, one dream. Come on, boys. Feeling excited, I'm feeling energized, I'm feeling stretchy, limber up. <laughs> Alright, the first shot, about 30 out from the boundary line, got a kick between the two water cans. How are we feeling, boys? Confident? Ooh, you know, we used to do this for a living, yeah. yeah. Like, genuinely, like, at that. Easy. Over, like, over there. Two shots per team. Shut up. One shot each, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alright, yeah, then, these guys serious? Well. I did this for seven years. This is just a walk no, in the park for me. Kick. Walk up, kick a goal, tick. All right, then. Uh, easy. When you're ready. <laughs> One behind. Oh, Jesus. These ones can't play. Oh, can the ball's a bit flat. Let's make it interesting. Is that ball proper like KPI, KPS? Make it interesting, man. 
That's outrageous. Lining up, 30 out, no pressure at all. Oh, oh no, Jesus! Oh, we're home! We're home already! <laughs> Genuinely hit that on the instep of my heel. Now, Roger's technique gets questioned sometimes, but I like the accuracy. It's not about the technique, it's about how it goes through. Oh! Over oh, the line, too! Oh, did you see it over the line? It was not a chance. That's over a ball. That's, that's, ball. that's a point. You're a number 38. Who would pick that number? Kind of. Oh! <laughs> Alright, goal number two. This one's a Dylan Buffy special back over there. What we're going to do is, Dan, you stay there. Yep. Like it's going to be a one-two yep. from here. Handball to the teammate. You get Look the two. Away. You run through. Cones. Goal. Drop the hands. Ah! Oh, he's steady. He's cruises through. Yep. Easy as yes! that. Was, that was not convincing. No, that wasn't. It. Jeez. Well done. Well done. That's nearly missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys can't keep this. Are they pin yep. the string? Gets it back. Oh. Oh, on the oh. run, one-handed. That's, oh, that's a procession easy, now. That's too easy, man. It's easy. I did this for seven years. Clubs pay me money to do that at VFL level. I'm a good player. Is there any recruiters in the glass house who just saw that? I'm only 30. You can't forget what it means to be us. You know? I'm a full-time coach as a ward winner, all right? You don't get that if you can't keep. Oh, oh no, 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 Come on! That's what it's all about, baby! Go, it didn't look right. <sighs> right, Josh, Josh, Josh. Oh, it's right, shaky. Down. It's shaky. Oh. Yeah! Get over the line over again. Line. Again, over the two. DQ. Come on. Two from two. DQ. All right, next spot. Next up, we're going the dribbler. We're going to run through this gate here, dribble it straight through the high diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Here we go. I'm going. You're going, all right. No, it's Coffey. Yeah, that was Coffey. the worst. That's yeah. Coffey's knee. Yeah. Come on. Oh, oh, it feels good. Here we go, McDonald. Bang. No. At least we register a point. Handy point, though. We register a point. We're up by a kick. Yeah. Two, 13. No chance still. Oh, he's almost my thumb on buddies. Oh, skinny. It's skinny. 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 We're 19, they're 14. The next kick to put them in front by a point. This is why I went big 10. Have ever seen a 6 foot 7 block do this? To put them in front. Oh. Goes from the boundary. No chance. Rolls it, rolls it, oh. rolls it. Last kick, we're up by one point, thanks to Goz. No worries. It's going to be a snap. Again. Here we go. Reputation depends on a big Feels good, looks good. That's no going chance. back, that's not coming back. No, that's not no, back. Score. Oh, no score. No score. No score. No score. No score. No score. No As I said in my career, why score always Goz? Why always Goz to save the day? Easy, Goz. boys. Yes! Yeah. No. No. No score. Score! See, it's a a goal yeah. contact with to boot. win the it's game. Good. A point to level things. Oh no. <laughs> oh no! Yes! Yes! You're an idiot! <laughs> what have you done? So what have aggressive. you done? Foot. One point down. A point to equal. A goal for the win. We've tried all day. Just find your foot. This for the magic. Oh, Look how nervous he looks. That jump is a bit Oh loose. no, hasn't even held the ball right. Belly. We were down by a point. We needed a point to equal or a goal to win. I've slotted it from the nosebleeds. I couldn't even see the goal posts. It was that tight of an angle. I couldn't even see any of the goal faces. It was impossible. The impossible like, goal. Defied the laws of physics. Albert Einstein's Nobel Peace Prize has been revoked because his laws of physics have been proven to be false by that goal. That's just one of the goal kicking challenge against the, list cloggers. The absolute ultimate resis have knocked off the list cloggers. I see it, but I don't believe and it. And more importantly, we are now the superior podcast. Goes all right. Tune in. Unbelievable scenes, Roggy. We've taken out the goal kicking challenge against the list cloggers, lads. How good was that? That was the most clutch disposal of the football I think <laughs> I've ever seen. People will think we shot that a million times or two. You got it right. That was one take straight through the high diddle diddle. That must be like the greatest achievement of your life to assert goes all right's dominance over list cloggers. <laughs> it was a great uh, kick, a little bit of a fluke, I reckon. I usually butcher the, the clutch moment, so to finally get one back was a very good feeling. Uh, Rog, we've had an amazing grand final special show this has been a great day so many highlights for this grand final special oh, i love jackie post song that was probably my favorite but the bromley it, lynch twins oh don't we love the bromley uh, lynch boys their quiz you got to check them out if you haven't already and uh, it's grand final week how can you not be up and about and excited it is, it is honestly the best time of the year it is super exciting um Roggie, what are your plans for the weekend 
Well, like a grand final day is the single greatest day on the calendar. It's when you get around all your friends, all your family, and you just celebrate what is the single greatest thing this country has to offer. So just going to soak it in. Super exciting. Um, Good luck to everyone if you go for Geelong, if you go for the Swans. um, Enjoy the nerves. Enjoy the roller coaster of that game. And, uh, yeah, we want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Goes All Right Grand Final Special. um, And we'll see you next Tuesday to break down the big contest um, by myself and Connor Rogers. So thanks to everyone tuning in to Goes All Right, a Spotify original podcast. Hey, this is Caden McDonald and this is Goes All Right.